tend to throw all what's in here on the carpet because usually I only get mineral water. But <laughs> why have I tonight got real champagne? Because we sold the carpet yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that explains that. <laughs> well, um, do you want to hear any more music tonight? Yes! Yeah. Have it your own way, then. Oh, you! <laughs> well, all right. Uh, I, I want to sing something now. Oh! <laughs> This is a, a, I was saying to someone here the other night, you stand on stages and you go to performances and you think, gee, I'd like to sing that song. And uh, it's something you'd never, never really do. And I wanted to sing this song from the Sorcerer of Gilbert and Sullivan. One of those patter songs, you know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a test to see if you can remember it. And I rang up Alan's and I said, have you got a score of the Sorcerer? Oh, no, I didn't. I rang up and I said, could you put me through to the music department? So this voice said, yes, mate. And this is a lady. And I said, uh, is that Alan's music department? Yeah. And I said, well, have you got a score of the Sorcerer? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I said, uh, I suddenly thought, I have to pay too much for this score. Perhaps you've got a Gilbert Sullivan songbook. And she said, well, which song do you want? And I said, my name is John Wellington Wells. And she said, yeah, all right, Mr. Wells, but which song do you want? <laughs> so when I went in to pick it up, there it was, pinned across the top to be collected by Mr. Wells. <laughs> anyway, it's the Sorcerer song. My name is John Wellington Wells. <coughs> if you'll stop sabotaging me and let me have Lisa as a pianist. Um, and there's be a special uh, dispensation if I make a mistake. But who will know? Who knows the song from the Sorcerer? I. You do, Doc. Thank you well, I've only heard it five times, John. <laughs> yes, but you've heard the one about the dog five times, and you haven't got that one yet. We had Sam Sneed in Sweden, you see, and Sam Sneed told this golfing story. There were a lot, a lot of golfers here, I'm sure. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> and, of course, this is... You've heard all the normal golfing stories, but Sam Sneed, this is his favorite golfing story, and, and it's so obvious you don't think about it. He said this, this young fellow took his girlfriend to the golf to watch the pros, and, and this, I saw Bruce Crampton do that, steps up on the tee, you know, the great champion, and hit off at six foot along the ground into the bushes, you see. So the girl says, oh, God, that's terrible. So he manages to get the ball, and he hacks it out, and it goes right across the fairway and into the bushes on the other side. Oh, dear, she said, this is terrible. He slams it out of the bushes on the other side and it bounces off a tree into a bunker. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Takes his sand iron, chops it out of the bunker, it goes straight into the hole. She said, oh, my God, now he's really in trouble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, George? <laughs> for that. <laughs> See, I told you I couldn't make a mistake. <laughs> My name is John Wellington Wells. I'm a dealer in magic and spells. And blessings and curses and never filled purses and prophecies, witches and nerves. If you melt every jungle in wax, if you melt every jungle in wax, you've got to look in on the resident gin number 70 simmery axe. We got first made a softener of magic and for raising a posthumous shade. With a face that a comic or tragic, there's no cheaper house in the trade. Love's filled with quantities of it. Unbounded returns, for he can prophesy with a wink, prophesy peep with security, into fertility, some of your history, clears up the mystery, human proclivity, or relativity, for an eternity. He has answers oracular, bony, spectacular, tater punch, tragical, mirror so magical, next astronomical, solemn or comical, and if you want it, he makes a reduction for taking a quantity. Oh, if anyone anything lacks, he'll find it already in stacks, if he'll only look in on the resident gin, number 70 simile acts. of ghosts and that without reflectors and creepy things with wings and dark and dismal spectres he can fill you crowds of shrouds and horrify you vastly he can rack your brains with chains and shivering scream and ghastly then if you plan it he 
changes our vanity with an urbanity full of satanity, makes us humanity fatal to vanity, driving your force to the verge of insanity. Tautology, in demonology, electrobiology, mystic pathology, spirit philology, hydrous astrology, such as his knowledge, he isn't the man to require an apology. Oh, my name is John Wellington Wells. I'm a dealer in magic and spells, in blessings and curses, and ethical curses and prophecies, witches and knells. And if anyone anything lacks, you'll find it already in stacks. If you'll only look in on the resident gin, number 70 simile. Well, you can think to yourself that's the last time I'm ever going to sing that. <laughs> because uh, our next concert is in the Arts Centre in Hong Kong, and I don't think the Cantonese will go for the translation. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, as I said to someone tonight, I will get lots of flensy crappy. <laughs> uh, I, might sell, I might sing that well-known well-known song that went to the top of the hit parade there, Lows, Lows, I Rove You. Uh, everyone keeps deserting me here. We were getting to do something else. Monique, uh, it's getting past the witching hour. 11 o'clock is overtime, you know. Um, we'd like to sing a little duet for you. Uh, this is another George Gershwin, isn't it? Yes, it is. In 1971, I brought Monique out to Australia to see what she thought of the place, what the place thought of her. And the ABC engaged us for a, for a series of television programs called John and Monique. Monique and John. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it as John and Monique. Wrong. But I also remember it as the worst script that has ever, ever, ever been perpetrated upon it human beings. Been, it should have been written in Swedish, actually. Well, it practically was. They had this brilliant idea in the first program of making Monique speak. Ocker Australian, you see, and they rewrote the second verse, and we'll give you an example of what it sounded like. No, no, I'll teach you how to speak dinky die Australian. I'll, um, you know, I'll, that's the key thing. <laughs> Say nudist. And you say nutty. I say bother. And you say bloody. For 